Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds. Hang out with these nerds. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. And our intro to Dungeons & Dragons continues. This time we're talking about the Druid. First off, we want to start this video with a thank you to our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice. Whether it's your first set of dice or your hundredth set of dice, Easy Roller Dice for your dice rolling needs, there is a link in the description below for easyrollerdice.com backslash nerdarchy, as well as a special one-time use coupon code for a 20% discount. So in this video, we are talking about druids in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So what is a druid? So a druid is typically one who is one with nature or one who reveres nature. Uh, so druids also are have a uh, historical reference from the real world as well, although... The D and D mythos has greatly changed changed them from what they are. In D and D, the druid, as Ted said, is someone that they kind of revere nature. They may be shamans. They could be nature priests or nature clerics. Yeah, they resemble more the mythological druids of the past. But instead of worshiping a deity or a god, they might just actually worship the 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 for, forces of nature themselves, whether it be the elements or nature as a whole. So why would one want to play a druid? Well, if you want to master and manipulate uh, nature itself, that would be a good reason to play a druid. Or shape change into fantastic beasts. In uh, Dungeons and Dragons, our druids come in two different varieties, which you can find the druid in your player's handbook on page 64. You have Circle of the Land and Circle of the Moon. Now, the moon is the one who falls into the shape-shifting into fantastic beasts. And as they, as they grow in power, you can turn into larger and more powerful creatures. Yeah, a good example of that would be Beast Boy from the Teen Titans or Boren from The Hobbit. Now, the Circle of the Land, this is the one that focuses their power more on spellcasting. And I feel Radagast the Brown from the, the Hobbit and the overarching you know Lord of the Rings uh, series fits more in into that dynamic or that that whole especially if you watch the Lord of the Rings movies or that the Hobbit movies as well as many of the mythical characters out of the Irish myths and legends from the Twat the Danu I think that's what I say it Circle of Land Druids are more of specialists and they have an affinity for particular environments whether it be swamps mountains the oceans desert forests you know, and they gain uh, more magical powers geared towards those specific places. All right, so now the, the druid does have some interesting choices, or I should say limitations, in their armor and weapon use. And a lot of this actually stems from their, their own beliefs in, in the world, in their mythology. Druids are not allowed to wear any metal armor, and their weapons are either something that's linked in symbology or things that they would actually consider tools for the, the, the wilderness or farming or that kind of stuff. Yeah, Druid is much more focused on spell casting as well as uh, wilderness survival and other knowledges uh, dealing with herbal medicines and things than they are with only weapons. Now, much like your, much like your clerics, your bards, a Druid is a full, considered a full spell casting class. So they have, you know, access to spells at every level, and as they gain level, the spells gain more and more, become more and more potent. Uh, the interesting thing is they can be a healer like a cleric, or they can control the battlefield like a, like a wizard or sorcerer. But they kind of fall in the middle of the two because they, they do not excel at healing the way a cleric does, and they don't necessarily excel the way a wizard does at battlefield control and manipulation. So they kind of fit right in the middle. They differ from wizards and sorcerers that their damage type tends to be elemental in nature. Now they also get a large variety of utility spells that lets them you know, either master or work with the natural surroundings um, all around them, of course. So, so that makes it more interesting, when, whether they're commuting with a, nature, speaking to plants, or speaking to animals. They're also pretty powerful summoners as well. They have, a, they have one of the largest options in the player's handbook when it comes to conjuring different creatures. They can conjure animals, they can conjure fey creatures, and they can conjure elementals. 
though uh, druids are very much like nature priests, or you might even say nature clerics, but not all are quite the same. Some of them might revere the more savage aspects of nature, uh, like fierce beasts or, or wild storms. Some might be more geared towards actual reverence and literally just try to be protectors and have an area that they consider that's their, their domain and anyone that tries to damage the, the plants or animals in the area is considered a threat. And while those druids may be more militant in their actions against uh, more developed regions of the world, uh, they can just as easily be the opposite where they're looking for a peaceful coexistence between the natural realm and the realms that humans make and the other races. Make. Yeah, you might find druids in a village teaching the farmers how to coexist with the natural in the natural surroundings to the best of their ability. And how to make their crops grow better. The druid suffers from the same problem as the cleric when it comes to who makes the best druid, right? Because the primary casting... Uh, ability for a druid is wisdom while there are no races that have the primary stat of wisdom there's several that have the secondary though so the the ones that would actually benefit here are going to be your wood elf and your hill dwarf but both of them are going to have their secondary bonuses to wisdom also with humans and half elves flexibility and where they put their bonuses they also make good base druids now the wood elf is is more geared towards nature in general, so I think that one would be for a lot of people uh, a prime choice. But half elves are close to elves, and humans are good at just about everything. So I think those those three really do a good job. But then again, if you want to play a a hardy druid with access to more weapon proficiencies, I would go with the hill dwarf. But as always, you can play any race with a druid class. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about druids or how to play them or what's the best way to, to make a druid, you can put those comments down below and either one of us or one of our awesome fans will be more than happy to jump in and answer them. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget... Don't forget to check for the easyrollerdice.com backslash nerdarchy link in the description below and get your 20% discount. You can also check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.